Hello! Today we're going to look at Vieta's substitution. We use Vieta's substitution to solve cubic equations, but specifically the form 0 is equal to tq plus pt plus q. So last time we saw it, we started with the cubic function ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. We can turn that into at cubed plus bt plus c using a substitution that looks just like a horizontal translation. And we divide by the leading coefficient, we end up with tq plus pt plus q. And if we can go from ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d to tq plus pt plus q, we can actually go back as well. So if we can find the roots for this form, we can actually find the root for all forms of cubic functions. And in fact, that means we can solve cubic equations in general. That's very nice. So we only need to consider 0 is equal to tq plus pt plus q because all equations that have this instead of the tq plus pt plus q can be reduced to this form. How do we solve it? We need to make, as you might have guessed, a substitution. And I'll tell you, the substitution is just t is equal to w minus p over 3w. We plug it in, we expand it. I skipped a few steps on the board, we'll revisit it later. I just want you to see what this substitution gives us right now. Plug it in, and like magic, we end up with 0 is equal to w cubed plus q minus p cubed over 27 w cubed. We'll multiply by w cubed, and now we have degree 6, a sextic equation. Why did we do this? In fact, this is easier than the cubic equation because it's just a quadratic equation, but disguised. So we'll notice w to the 6th power is just w cubed squared. We rewrite it, and we have something squared plus q times something, then plus something, your arbitrary constant. So these are your coefficients of the quadratic equation. This is your independent variable, w cubed. So the sextic equation is what we call a quadratic equation in w cubed. This is just a quadratic equation. We can solve for w cubed. Take the cube root, plug it back here, and you know t is equal to something in terms of w. After we do all of this, we've actually found the roots for 0 is equal to t cubed plus pt plus q. All right, here we go. We're going to show all of the skip steps from earlier that led us to our nice quadratic equation. We had t cubed plus pt plus q. We made Vieta's substitution, which says t should be w minus p over 3w. We plug it in. We're going to expand it now. So this is the cube part being expanded all on this line, and you can use Pascal's triangle. Hopefully you're somewhat decent at algebra and we have plus pw plus multiply the p using the distributive property. This is all just boring algebra, but I'm sure someone wants to see the steps. It's good for learning, it's good for understanding, good for checking your answer if you're trying it out for yourself. Plus q, and that's equal to zero. The next step, we're going to multiply all of these together, and nicely we see w squared over w gives us just w. Same thing here and there. We bring this line down, I've expanded everything, and the great thing is that with the substitution we've chosen, and we chose it specifically for this reason, we notice that this part cancels out. Plus P or minus PW plus PW is just zero. And similarly, we have plus P squared over 3W minus P squared over 3W. Both of them cancel out, and what we're left with is W cubed, plus q minus p cubed to over 27 w cubed. And I've written it down here in a different order. You still get the gist. 0 is equal to w cubed plus q minus p cubed over 27 w cubed. We're running out of space, so I'm going to write this up here again. So we have a little bit of working space. 0 is equal to w cubed plus q minus p cubed over 27 w cubed. This is the last part that we actually saw earlier. We're going to multiply the entire thing by w cubed. Why do we do that? To get the quadratic equation, or rather the sextic equation. It's actually a disguised quadratic equation. Now we have 0 is equal to w cubed times w cubed is w to the sixth power plus q w cubed 
And here the W cubes cancel out and we have minus P cubed over 27, uh, just 27. There we go. This is the substitution we know and love. This is the quadratic or sextic equation. That's actually a quadratic equation disguised. This is what we love. That's Vieta substitution. And these are all of the steps that we excluded earlier. To be honest, it's not that fun to do all of this algebra work. It's very easy to make a mistake. But if you're careful, you end up with this amazing equation right there. Okay, let's look at an example. Here we have t cubed plus 3t minus 1 is equal to 0. Can we even use Vieta's substitution? That's the first thing you should ask. Maybe you just had a different type of cubic equation. In that case, Vieta's substitution is unfortunately going to fail you. So, quick reminder, if we have t cubed plus pt plus q equals 0, we can make Vieta's substitution. Let's check quickly. Yep, it matches, and you can tell because there's no t squared, or the coefficient of the t squared term is 0, and the leading coefficient is 1. So, we're set. Vieta's substitution is, quick reminder, t is equal to w minus p over 3w. I also have it written up here. So, we have w to the 6th power plus q w cubed minus p cubed over 27 is equal to 0. After we plug this in and expand and multiply by w cubed and all of that. And the reason we did this, of course, was because this is just a quadratic equation. And we know how to solve quadratic equations. So here we have it. We're going to make a substitution. t is equal to w minus p over 3w. p is just 3. And that simplifies to being w minus 1 over w. Now we have this form. And we're going to make the substitution because we have our coefficients. I would recommend memorizing this line. Although you're always going to get there if you memorize the substitution, plug it in and expand, it just takes a very long time. It's nice to have this ready in your mind. Q is just negative 1. Plug it in. Negative 1. P is just 3. There we go. 3. Slightly poorly written, but 3. Now we have w to the 6th power minus w cubed, and then minus, this is 3 cubed, which is 1, over so 3 cubed, which is 27, over 27, which is just 1, equal to 0. So now we can say, and I'll write it up here, w cubed is just going to be the solution to a quadratic formula. So we have minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac. Nice formula. A lot easier than the cubic formula. In fact, I wouldn't recommend learning the cubic formula because it's just way too unwieldy. We'll plug in our coefficients. b is negative 1. Here it goes, here it goes. a is 1. Plug it in here and there. And finally we have c which is negative 1. I'm going to simplify this in one step, and we can say w cubed is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And in this series, we're actually going to be a little technical. Uh, in fact, you only need to take the positive or the negative square root. doesn't matter which one, but you only need to pick 1. Just make sure it's not 0. Remember that. We don't want w to be 0 because we're dividing by w here. No good if it's 0. In this case, I'm going to take the positive version, because I know that's not 0. And it's just easier to work with positive numbers, in my opinion. Now we're going to take the cube root. But as we saw earlier, if you've seen my difference of cubes video, there's actually more than one cube root. Just like how there's more than one square root. For example, 1 has negative 1 and 1 as square roots. There's more than one cube root. So I can say w is going to be cube root of 1 plus square root 5 over 2. But there are two more cube roots that we're missing. This is what we call the principal cube root. And I'll just tell you, it's going to be negative 1 half 
plus square root 3 over 2i raised to, I'll say, the kth power, where k is equal to 0, 1, and 2. And that's going to give us the three cube roots. You can check because when you cube uh, this to the zeroth power or this to the first power, this to the second power, you actually end up with 1. And we just have 1 plus square root 5 over 2. Check it for yourself. Turns out it's true. Anyway, if we're being really technical looking at complex roots, this is how you'd find them. You'd have cube root of 1 plus square root 5 over 2 multiplied by what we call a cube root of unity raised to the powers 0, 1, and 2. Those are your three cube roots, and we plug it back in up here, w minus 1 over w, because that's just t. After we make that substitution, we find we have the three roots for our cubic equation. And we expect to have three cube roots, or three roots, don't we? For quadratics, we have two roots. For our linear, that is degree 1, we have one root. So cubic, which is degree 3, we're going to have three roots. It's not very easy. There is one more catch. I already brought up complex numbers. What we have underneath the square root, what you might call the discriminant, is going to be a little problematic for us because if it's negative, we actually don't know what to do anymore because it's going to be complex and we need to take the cube root of a complex number. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but I just want you to be aware that this is only going to work if our discriminant of the, of the sexic equation, that's a quadratic equation here, is positive. If it's not, we have a bit of a problem. We don't know how to take the cube root of complex numbers. A little bit of storytelling, this was actually quite a problem for mathematicians back in the day. Uh, I don't remember his name, but a mathematician found a formula or found a technique for solving cubic equations, but it involved taking the square root of a negative number. Back then, we didn't have imaginary or complex numbers, so he said, what if, what if imaginary numbers did exist? You could take the square root of negative 1, and it was i. If that were to be true, he ended up correctly finding the roots. It took a long time for this to be accepted, but it turns out complex numbers are useful. And this is where they first appear, for the most part, solving cubic equations. The search for the cubic formula gave us complex numbers. Anyway, I'm not going to plug this back in. It's a little bit of a mess. We're going to need to work with complex numbers, which I'm not teaching. But you see the technique actually isn't too difficult. We start with our depressed cubic equation, bringing it up again, t cubed plus pt plus q is equal to zero, make v out of substitution, which is what I've tried to teach today, and we end up with a new quadratic equation. We solve, we find out what w is, we plug it in up here, and we know what t is. So in fact, we've already solved this cubic equation. Congratulations, that was the first cubic equation you've solved using Vieta's substitution.